Hey there, it's Dr. Beavler again. We're going to continue to talk about mitochondrial heteroplasmy. So in the last one, we kind of defined what mitochondrial heteroplasmy is. We talked about how mitochondria have their own DNA and how it's very susceptible to DNA mutations, which can then damage uh, very important systems within the mitochondria and damage its function pretty, pretty easily. So what we're going to see here is that, you know, the central, the central problem here is that we, so as you can see, there's immunologic diseases, there's cancers, there's metabolic diseases, there's age, there's premature aging, there's neurodegenerative diseases, and they all stem from a progressive lack of energy production at the cellular level, at the mitochondrial level. So how does that happen? Basically, several factors, particularly environmental factors, um, endogenous reactive oxygen species, which we're going to talk about in, at length how that happens, but basically a redox imbalance leads to damage of the mitochondrial DNA, which then encode for the oxidative phosphorylation genes. Oxidative phosphorylation is one of the major sites of redox in the body. So when you have damage to the oxidative phosphorylation system, you have altered redox, which then has a snowball effect on damaging more mitochondrial DNA, which then leads to a progressive decline in the mitochondria's ability to create energy, which then leads to disease. I just want to make a note. This Dr. Doug Wallace on the left-hand side here um, is the director for the Center of Mitochondrial and Epigenomic Medicine at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. He's one of the premier mitochondrial researchers and um, just wanted to pay homage to him because he, a lot of this information, a lot of the published studies uh, about mitochondrial heteroplasmy come initially from him and his group. So this is just a, basically another um, graphical representation of a very similar thing. So we have the metabolic diseases, type 2 diabetes, obesity, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, stress-related diseases, inflammatory or autoimmune diseases, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, et cetera. Then we have premature aging, neuropsychological diseases, fatigue, cancer, et cetera. All are, a, are, are rooted in the fact that there is a bioenergetic decline, a lack of ATP at the mitochondrial level due to progressive damage to the uh, system that makes the ATP, the oxidative phosphorylation system. And as you remember from the uh, previous lecture, 13 of the genes are directly uh, related to oxidative phosphorylation uh, and the proteins that, that are, are on the electron transport chain. And all 37 genes are related to normal mitochondrial function. So this is a big deal. So how does this happen? And, and, and how does, you know, how do we meet that threshold of disease? So basically, you know, and this is a very simplistic model, and there'll be several simplistic models, but basically when we're born uh, or early in life, we're going to have a lot of normal mitochondria. So in this representation, we have 100% normal on the right-hand side, right, bottom right. Then as these mutations start to build up, you start to see that there's dysfunctional. It's in the red, the dysfunctional or mutant mitochondria, which then starts to build up. And over time, that will that that is the percent heteroplasmy. So as we as we get towards 40% heteroplasmy, there may be a certain threshold for some diseases that are, you know, maybe it could be obesity, it could be high blood pressure, it could be diabetes. Then at 60%, there's going to be another threshold disease for that, for those particular pathologies. And then at some point, you're going to hit a high threshold for other diseases. And actually, Dr. Doug Wallace's group actually has found out that as the mitochondrial heteroplasmy percent goes up, um, you progressively uh, lose function and you progressively develop diseases that we all are familiar with. So this is just another representation of how this happens. So whether it's a dividing cell or a non-dividing cell, basically mutated uh, DNA and wild type DNA or normal DNA um, are, are segregated amongst the daughter or progenitor cells uh, through various mechanisms, whether it be through dividing or whether it be through uh, other ways through, and we're going to talk about this. This is the, the bottom left segment is, is actually called what we call mitochondrial dynamics. We'll actually have an entire series within this series about mitochondrial dynamics. And uh, that's, that's where you have the different, you know, mitochondrial biogenesis, fusion, fission, um, and mitophagy. And then there's another, there's actually, there's actually lateral transfer of mitochondria, which where you can actually the, the body will will send healthy mitochondria to tissues that are damaged to help try to improve the bioenergetics of that 
particular uh, cell that's that's damaged. So just another way of looking at it. So it, 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 on the normal, the normal cell has a you know let's say 100% of the normal or wild type uh, DNA my, mitochondrial DNA, and then there's some agent that comes in. You know we call this epigenetics. Something comes in, whether it be uh, a chemical, whether it be uh, you know radiation, whether it be some insult to the DNA that leads to mutations, and then over time that heteroplasmy builds towards uh, towards 100% uh, you know homoplasmy or 100% of of one particular mutant DNA, which then at some point we hit some biological threshold for in this case cancer. Is another picture of the same thing. Uh, basically, you know we start on the far left with having a lot of uh, or in some cases, you know, 100% of the wild type DNA that is normal, healthy, producing a lot of ATP, encoding the right genes, uh, functioning mitochondria. There's some insult that happens. Uh, we get a, we get our, our first DNA mutation. And then later through life, that threshold uh, is reached where you then, then develop a dysfunctional or disease mitochondria. This is a representation of how, you know, mitochondrial DNA heteroplasmy is going to affect uh, our anti-inflammatory and pro-inflammatory states through the immune system. It's going to potentially lead to the initiation and progression of cancer. And then it's going to also, and in, in, in the figure E, how mitochondrial decline, bioenergetic decline will then lead to memory and cognitive deficits uh, such as Alzheimer's and dementia. I really hope that this video helps you better understand what mitochondrial heteroplasmy is. I know there was a lot of kind of recurring pictures kind of showing very similar things, but I really wanted uh, those pictures to help drive the points home that, you know, early in life, unless you have one of these inherited mitochondrial diseases that we've talked about, you're going to have the vast majority of your mitochondria be healthy, highly functional, uh, wild type uh, mitochondria. And as we go through life, every decade, we our heteroplasmy percent goes up you know, roughly 10% uh, under normal circumstances, uh, not to mention if we have, you know, a poor diet, we have, you know, a poor lighting environment, poor sleep, uh, lack of exercise, all the things that we know cause disease, which we're going to talk about in detail later. Um, but we're going to increase that heteroplasmy rate at greater rates, which is why we're seeing a lot of these diseases seemingly come out of nowhere in young, in young patients. So I hope that you are uh, enjoying the journey. Just getting started. You know, I was looking at the PowerPoint and we're 82 slides into 1200 and the story is long. The story is arduous. Um, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just building the narrative. So we have the vocabulary and we have the understanding of where we're going. Uh, so when we talk about, you know, redox and in and, and detail, we, we have uh, an understanding of, of, of why that's bad. Because uh, we're talking about this mitochondrial heteroplasmy in particular at this time, and from a, a really a twenty thousand foot view of of how the damage that we talk about later and redox imbalance leads to disease. So um, stick with us. Uh, I really want to teach you uh, how uh, to take control of your health and to empower yourself and to teach others. You know, your friends, your family, uh, teach your doctor, uh, healthcare practitioners strangers, you know, uh, about this, because it's going to, it's going to lead to um, hopefully a revolution where the empowered patient uh, changes the system. Uh, I don't believe that the medical professionals will change the system amongst themselves. I think they're too ingrained in the system. They too, they're too dependent on the system. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot, there's a, there's a, there's a lack of willingness to step outside their comfort zone. And when they learn it, what they learn in medical school, and um, so I, I do believe it's going to be you, the patient, uh, or the the non medical professional out there who will be able to uh, change the system um, from the outside. And uh, I, I look forward to teaching you uh, what I understand uh, about the genesis of you know human disease from a my mitochondrial perspective over the next coming weeks and months. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them in the chat and I'll do my best to try to get back to you. Um, if you like this material, please like the video. If you if you, if you you want to see more of this, uh, please subscribe and I'm going to keep doing it. And 
I look forward to uh, presenting the material and uh, learning together. Mm -hmm.